I'm Jay and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things lifestyle, health, and wellness. Today, I'm excited because I finally got my item from the Chanel store. First off, y'all, let me just say this before we jump in. My item was lost in the mail for a whole week. So I'm, I'm very frustrated. You know, the little package you saw at the beginning of the video going in the boutique, that was me going in the Chanel boutique to get the item that I'm about to unbox, but they didn't have the item that I wanted. So they had to order it from the Miami store and then it ended up coming from an Atlanta store and then it was lost in the mail for a whole week. So if you talking about pissed, baby, I was pissed. And so I'm excited to unbox my item because number one, I didn't get to see it in the Chanel store because they didn't have it. And then it was lost in the mail for a whole week and then I just got it and I haven't opened it yet. So this is gonna be a true unboxing video because I haven't even seen the item. I'm gonna see the item for the first time with y'all on the camera. But let me just say, you know, this is my first time going in the Chanel store and I wanted the full experience. I wanted to walk in, hi, can I get my item? Them box it up, I pay for it, I come out the store swinging my bag looking cute. That wasn't the experience. <laughs> As soon as I walked in and showed her on my phone what I wanted, she was like, oh, baby, we ain't got that. You know, I can get it for you, but it's going to come in the mail in two days. And it ended up taking a week and getting lost in just the stress and anxiety of all of that. So it wasn't a fun experience. I'm excited to see you and hope that this is, you know, what I want. But I want to walk in, walk out, looking cute. But that, that just wasn't my experience. But um, sorry, y'all. But the store I went to was in Highland Park Village in Dallas. That's the Chanel store that I went to. And sorry, I gotta make some adjustments. Stuff is falling. Um, and the boutique itself, like you saw at the beginning of the video, very nice. They had a lot of things to look at, a lot of things available, just not the item that I wanted. So um, my overall experience, not as fun or as exciting that, as I would have wanted, but I got the item eventually. It was just a lot of stress, a lot of phone calls. Like, where's my stuff? I need my stuff. And so anyway, I have my stuff now, so I'm excited to open this with y'all and see what we're gonna get. Um, but if Chanel is not your thing, if you watching this and you're like, I don't care what you got from the Chanel store, I don't even like Chanel. Stay tuned because towards the end of the video, I am gonna talk about a little bit about money management tips and saving your money. So you might be watching this like, bro, you finna open something from the Chanel store. How you gonna tell me about saving money? Trust me, it's gonna be good um, because they don't teach us how to save money. You know, they in school and in, in life, we just kind of have to learn by trial and error. So if again, you could care less about what's in this box, just fast forward because there'll still be some good tips and tricks towards the end about saving your money. Um, and so anyway, let's jump right on in because I've been waiting for this. And I'm tired and I need to see, is this even what I want? Because if I open this and it's not what I want, Jesus. So anyway, it shipped via FedEx. It was supposed to be two day shipping, whatever. Somehow my address got mixed up. Of course that happens to my stuff. And so it was, like I said, lost in the mail for a whole week. I had to end up picking it up from a FedEx um, like shipping location, but I got it and this is how it came. So it came in a, a box already prepackaged like this. You have, I don't know what I didn't waste it on the box, but you have the Chanel flower and then just the ribbon. And then it came with this little envelope that is um, my receipt for my purchase. So that's all this is. And so let's see. So I'm gonna open it up. Now, before I jump in, the reason why I wanted something from Chanel, cause this is kind of just like me jumping in so quick. Um, I really like Chanel as a brand because it's very girly. Um, they use just higher quality, higher quality leathers and things like that. And when you talk about high-end designer brands, I don't know, this year I'm thinking about stuff like more as an investment. Um, you know, I've been bought from Gucci, Louis, MCM, all these different things. But when I think about what's going to hold its value, Chanel is just one of those brands that, you know, if you buy a purse or a wallet or something from them, um, and let's say you hit hard times in two or three years or something like that, you have to resell it. Um, an item from somewhere like Chanel will actually hold its resale value and things like that just because of the things, I mean, the leather and just the materials that they use to create their products. 
And I just like it because it's so girly, like all the color options, you know, like the bright, bold colors and different things that you can get with Chanel. It's just, it's just so cute, you know, from the accessories to the shoes to, of course, the bags, wallets. Um, it's just really girly and I just like it. So I was like, if I'm gonna buy anything, I'm gonna give me something for Chanel um, this year because of that reason. So that's why um, this didn't just come out the clear blue sky. I was just thinking, you know, I want something, but I'm tired of going to Gucci. I'm tired of going to Louis. Let's let's step it up. Let's, let's do Chanel. But um, yeah, that's kind of where that came from. So jumping right on in, I'm gonna put that hand up in this. So I took the ribbon off, it just says Chanel, it's just, it says Chanel. <laughs> Pop it open. So it looks like inside of here is just a little fold bag. And I guess it's the little, again, y'all, this is my first time opening, opening this. Um, just the tag. Is this looking like what I want? It's looking like what I want. So what I got was a card holder. Just before I show y'all this, I typically hold, this is a Gucci card holder, but this is like typically how I carry my my money. Like just little card holders, um, little flat wallets like this. I don't carry big wallets. I don't have a lot of cards and I don't carry a lot of cash. So this is kind of how I typically carry. So I saw Chanel had one that I thought would be cute for the summer. And I'm like, hey, it's so cute. This is how it looks. It's yellow. It's the color for me. Like, it's, it's the color for me. So I definitely, when I saw this online, I was like, it's the color. It's yellow, it's bold, it's popping, it's cute. We finna walk into spring, summer, so I was just like, I need something cute like this to be pulling out of my um, purse. And this is perfect. This is exactly what I envisioned it to look like. Inside of the box, it looks like it's just more paperwork from Chanel, I guess, just showing the authenticity or I don't know. This particular um, car case is made of lambskin. So baby, it is so soft. I'm touching it right now. I'm rubbing it right now. It's soft. It feels so much better than this Gucci one. Um, and it's actually a little bit bigger than the Gucci one, so that's good. The only thing I would say about this one is it has one less slot for cards. It looks like it has a slot in the front and then two slots on the back and then a slot in the middle. So inside there, it just says Chanel. One thing I learned through researching um, Chanel just as a brand is that I guess they used to like have um, microchips or something inside of all their stuff to do the authenticity. I might be misspeaking. I don't know if they microchipping it now or before they had a microchip, but there's basically a way that you can tell that it's a real Chanel item and not like a, like a fake. This right here has the RFID chip attached to this little thing. It just says RFID. And if you scan it, I don't know if y'all can see that, but if you were to scan it or if somebody were to scan it, then they would be able to say, okay, yeah, this is authentic. And so anyway, that was a quick unboxing. It's already open, but this is cute. It's exactly what I thought. And so what I liked about this is, you know, just the CC is like, it's just cute. It's not basic. It's just, I like bold, different stuff. That's just my style in general. And it's so soft. And then the color, I just, that's probably what I like the most about it. It's just that yellow. Like, this is going to be so cute pulling out in the spring, summer out of my purse. You know, whenever I'm out to eat, like, how much is it? You know, type of thing. So, and I like it because, like I said, it's bigger than um, the ones that I've carried in the past. And even though there's only three slots for cards, it looks like they're kind of wide. So I could put more than one card. I'm gonna put a few cards in here and see. Just to make sure this is what I need. So you can double your cards up. It's not like one card per slot if you, if you need it to. And then you could even wide cash in the middle. So yeah, it looks like if I were to do that, my ID and all that would fit. And then I could even put cards in the middle if I wanted, but like with my other card cases, I typically just put a little bit of cash in there. You know, just like fold it in half, stick it out. It's kind of how I do it. So definitely, I mean, so this little card case retail for $541. That's how much this was. Um, because when I think about Chanel as a brand, I've always thought like everything was like 
$1,000 to $10,000. And when I was looking, I was like, you know, I'm going to start small. I'm not going to be on here getting the $5,000 bag right now. I'm just simply not going to do that. Um, that's just not within my means to do right now. But I still wanted something from there. And so when I noticed that they had car cases, and I know that's what I personally typically carry, I was like, that's not too bad because this little Gucci one was $300 and it's not made of lambskin. And so I personally think it was a good investment for me and what my needs are. So I'm excited to carry it this spring and summer. I have a couple of like trips planned and things like this. So this will just be so cute. And I just, like I said, I just can't get over the color. It's perfect um, going into spring, summer. So if Chanel is something that you like or high-end designer is something that you like, I definitely recommend, but I also just recommend, I, I went into the Chanel store wanting this particular item. I had already looked online. I had already saved for it. I already just knew I wanted it. So when I went in and I showed it to her, I was like, yes, can you pull this out the back? And she was like, oh, we ain't got that. She already knew like, we don't have that. Um, it was one of the items where they didn't, I guess, even though it's online, they don't have a lot of them in general. Like, like I said, she said it was at the Miami store. It wasn't. It ended up coming from the Atlanta store. So it was just one of those items where they have it, but it's not like they ain't make a lot of these. And so I like that even more because that means everybody not going to be having this, um, which is great. But if you want the full Chanel experience where you're going in, you're getting your item, you're walking out, you just need to go in with an open mind to just get whatever they got available in the store. That's what I say. Um, they did have other little car cases in the store when, you know, they didn't have that yellow one you know, that she showed me. And I just didn't want to settle for that because my, my heart was just so set on this yellow one. So that was my experience. Again, I live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So I went to Highland Park Village. Um, that's the only Chanel store that I know of in the area. They don't have one in North Park Mall. They don't have one in Galleria. Um, so there might be one somewhere else, but this was the one I went to. The people inside of there were very nice, very helpful. Um, the lady, you know, she immediately put in the order to try to get it picked from the Miami or the Atlanta store. But I just wish I would have been able to walk out with my item and um, not have it lost in the mail for a whole week, stressing me out thinking, am I gonna get my item? But I got my item and I'm happy with it now that I've unboxed it with y'all. It is so cute. I'm just gonna take one more look. It's cute, it's soft, it's made of a lambskin. And so I just, like I said, if, if ever I have to resell this, it'll keep its value. This did retail for 541, that's how much I paid. So how it works is whenever the item is found, so like once it was found at the Chanel store in Atlanta, they sent me a link uh, via email and then I just paid via that link and then a FedEx label was created and it was shipped supposedly in two days, but it got lost. And so it's a pretty easy process if you do have to like get from another store, but just like everything else in my life, it's always a whole, debacle and it can never just be straight so anyway that's kind of was my experience but i am happy with my item it's so cute and i'm excited to stuff my cars in there and start going out to eat and stuff so i can use it but cute color perfect for spring summer um my you know first little like purchase meaning like wallet purse type purchase from Chanel and I definitely think it was worth it. So 10 out of 10 recommend. Now jumping right on into money management and saving. So some people might be watching this and being like, what do they have to do with a Chanel unboxing? The reason why I even thought about talking about this in addition to unboxing this Chanel item is I personally, my thing is how I spoil myself for working hard, whatever, is I like buying stuff like from the Gucci store and the Louis store and all that. That's just my thing. That's not everybody's thing. But when I bought my first ever Gucci purse and this particular wallet, I had to save for a whole year to buy it. I was in nursing school. I was broke. Baby, I didn't have no money for a Gucci or nothing high end. I was just, I just was broke. I <laughs> was paying for school out of pocket. I was going through a divorce, so paying for that and just a million of other things that I had on my plate at the time. This was in 2019. I didn't have no extra money for no Gucci purse or nothing. Um, but I knew that I had been going through so much at that time. And I'm in nursing school, which is so hard. I wanted to, you know, spoil myself when I graduated at the end of the year. So um, I did this 52-week money-saving challenge. 
and I said ended up saving like fourteen hundred dollars through the challenge. Um, and that's how I bought my first Gucci bag and, and card case. Um, I went to the Gucci store at the end of 2019, cash money, and paid for it. And it was great. Um, and what I learned through that, I've been pretty good with money management kind of from a younger age. But, you know, again, like I mentioned, this isn't something they teach us in school. Um, but what I learned from doing that over the whole year, some people might be like, a whole year? That's just what it took, you know. For me to get that particular item, I was able to learn the discipline of saving money. So I'll share towards the end um, a little clip of that 52 week money saving challenge that I did. It was very easy. You like for week one of the year, you save a dollar. Week two of the year, you save two dollars. And you know, and it just builds up. And by the 52nd week of the year, because it's 52 weeks in a year, you end up with like $1,378. And I think what I ended up doing is a few of the weeks I saved a little extra so I would have just a whole 1400 So it's really easy because you never save more than $52. And everybody got $55, $52, $52, $52 to $55. And so um, what I've learned about saving money, and when I mean saving money, I mean saving it and not touching it, is that it's all about discipline. And you have to learn the discipline through time. Like you can't just wake up one day and be like, I'm going to save $10,000 and think realistically that you're going to be able to do that without touching it if you've never even developed the discipline of saving money. So that's where this whole thought process came from. So when we think about saving money, the overall goal is three things, in my opinion. Again, I'm not a financial advisor. Let me just say that. I'm not a financial advisor, but I am really good with managing money. I have saved a good significant amount of money, and I mean saved and not touched it. And, you know, I've just learned through trial and error. So I feel like if I know just a few tips that might help you, great, it might help you um, type of thing. And so what I've learned through my experiences is that there are three main goals when we're talking about saving money and money management. You always want to have a little goal one. You always want to have a little bit of petty cash. Um, some people don't think about this, but you should have a little petty cash on hand at all times. Um, I personally call it my back money. Uh, that's just what I call it. And it's just a little amount of cash that I just have hidden just at all times. I think it's important to have a little cash on hand. I'm not saying a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars, but a hundred, two hundred, maybe even five hundred dollars of just cash on hand that you're not touching, not that you're using. This is a part of your savings. Because, you know, if again times haven't showed us anything at any point, your bank could freeze your account and now you can't go to the ATM and get cash. I remember maybe even like a month or two ago, some people who had Bank of America, I saw this on social media, they woke up and whatever they had in their account, they was in the negative. So let's say if you had 3000 in your account, you woke up and you was negative 3000 And people were calling in the Bank of America, couldn't get through that type of thing. What if you needed gas? What if you needed food? What if you had to pay a bill? And all you had was what was in your account and that's for whatever reason overdrawn or frozen because of something on the bank's behalf. Like, that's where stuff like petty cash is helpful because you can just grab from it, keep on going until that, you know, issue is resolved. Um, I remember one time I locked my keys in the car and it was late at night and I was coming from being out and the locksmith was trying to charge me like $150. But the dude they connected me to, he was like, look, if you got $50 cash, I'll open it for you right now. And I was so thankful for my petty cash at that point because I was like, actually, I do. Um, so I grabbed fifty dollars because I got I locked my keys in the car at home. So I came in, grabbed fifty dollars, paid him, and you know went on about my way. So it's important to have a little bit of petty cash if you can. The next goal is investment. So I think that's like a larger goal once you kind of have established money management, um, like a Roth IRA, which is an investment account that prepares you for retirement. Um, stocks and bonds. A lot of people trade stocks through Robinhood. I personally have a few stocks, um, well, not a few, just two. I have some stock in Amazon and I have some stock in Apple, but that's one of those things that it just, you know, you buy the stock and you just kind of watch it go up and down. Um, that's pretty volatile, but it's a way that your money can make money for you in your sleep, potentially. And then the last goal is your savings, which is what we're going to talk about. Um, so your savings is your savings. Everybody should have a little rainy day fund. And the truth of the matter is most people don't. Um, I think a good place to start if you don't have a rainy day fund is to at least have the amount of your rent and probably your car payment, one month of rent and one month of car payment put back. 
Um, Cause you just never know if the pandemic and everything else in the last few years has taught us anything. Anything could happen at any point in time and things could change. And so you need to have for yourself at least a month cushion. So if something were to happen, you not running around like, how am I paying my rent on the first? How am I paying my car payment? You know, you need to be able to have your car. You need to be able to have a roof over your head. And so if your rent is $1,400 and your car payment is $500, you should at least have $2,000 in savings that you not touching. Like that, that you just simply not touching. But it's like, how do you get there? You know, some people are like, I can save it, but every time I need something or if I go to the mall, I'm digging into it. And so that's where I was talking about discipline. It's not about the amount. It's about developing the discipline. And once you've developed the discipline, you can save. I mean, the amount of money you can save and not touch is, I'm telling you, you'll amaze yourself because I've amazed myself. Like, dang, I really didn't save that. Okay, I'm proud of me. Um, so how do we get there? Me personally, what I do at the beginning of every year is I set a goal for how much I want to save for the year. Um, so I do it for the year um, because to me, I can take what I want to save for the year and then I can clump it down into chunks. So let's say I wanted to save $5,000 for 2023. By the end of the year, I want to have $5,000 in my saving account that I'm not touching. If that's the goal that I make at the beginning of the year, what I then do is I divide that by 12 months. So if I want to save $5,000 by the end of the year, 12 months, that's going to be about $416 a month that I'm going to have to save in addition to my bills. And I look at my savings and what I put in my savings as a bill. It's a non-negotiable. Um, so then I divvy that down into checks. So I work an hourly position. I'm a nurse. And so I get paid um, every two weeks. And so that means I'm getting paid twice a month. Two, two months out of the year, I get paid three times. But we get paid twice a month. Um, so $416 a month because I'm trying to save $5,000 for the year. Uh, divvies out to about $208 per check. And then I take that and that's a non-negotiable. I think where some people, just in me talking to people, make a mistake is they're like, well, I want to save money. And then every time they get paid, they're saving a different amount every time. So, you know, especially if you're an hourly worker, that means your checks are different every time. So you might get paid and be like, oh, this check, I can save 300. But the next check, you only saving 50. Or the next, this check, you saving 50. And the next check, you ain't saving at all. That's hard for you. If you're doing it that way, you don't really ever develop the discipline because there's no consistency in what you're doing. So I feel like in my experience, if you have a goal and then you divvy it up, like I said, and then that's your non-negotiable, you know, every time I get paid, $208 is going in my savings account because my goal is 5,000 by the end of the year. So I think that's a little bit better than just like paying all your bills, seeing what you have left and saving from that. Make it a non-negotiable. So even if, you know, you pay all your bills, you put your money in savings and you ain't got that much money left over to like go out to eat or buy a new purse or buy, your, oh well, at least you are developing the discipline of saving money. So I think that's what helped me when I had larger goals for how much I wanted to save per year. And I'm talking five, ten thousand $10,000 that I'm trying to save. It's just like I had to have the discipline and it was the same amount, every single check, no matter what, and I knew what I was saving. So versus I got paid, I'm just gonna save 50 this time, but I'm going out of town next, you know, next check. So I ain't gonna save. You know, you never really will hit the goal that way. So I feel like if you can set a goal towards the end of the year, or if you're watching this right now, set the goal now. And from March to December, this is how much it would take per check for me to hit that particular goal. Make it a non-negotiable. Um, and then if this is your first time really starting to save or even budget at all, start small. Like I said, when I wanted to buy my first little Gucci bag and this little wallet right here, people might laugh and be like, is she saved for a whole year? I mean, I had to start small. I didn't have no money, but I knew, you know, I wanted, I wanted this. I wanted to spoil myself and I did not want to go into no type of debt trying to buy a Gucci purse. I just wasn't going to do that. And so I knew, you know, at the top of 2019, I was going to graduate in December. I had already looked on the Gucci website and I wanted this little bucket bag and I wanted this wallet. And both of them together was about $1,200. So I actually ended up having a little money left over. And I found that 52-week challenge and I just did it. And another tip is for some people, seeing the money in their account is tempting. So, you know, they're like, okay, this sounds good. I'm going to start and I'm just going to save $1,000. 
take it out in cash if you have to. Like some people literally have to have the money out of their account for them not to touch it. Cause it's hard. If you know your check and looking a little $30, but that savings looking like $2,000, you might be tempted to dig into that. So if you one of those people, either open a whole separate account that you're not checking online a lot, or like for this 52 week challenge, when I saved the money, I actually saved it in cash and I stuffed it in an envelope in my side table in my room. So it was never even in my account. Um, that's just what I had to do because I knew, especially around that time, if I saw the money, I might spend the money. And I knew I, I was working towards the goal. So if that's one of those things that you have to do is take the money fully out of your account. You know, like I said, have it cash, have it to the side, whatever. Do whatever it is going to take because it is. It can be tempting for people who are, this is their first time saving and budgeting, you know, to see money and then be like, why am I not spending this? But the good thing is once you develop the discipline, you, I mean, I'm telling you, the opportunities are limitless because that's what money management and saving is all about. It's not about how much you make. It's not about um, even the amount that you're saving. It's about discipline. It's the discipline to save the money and not touch it. So once you develop the discipline, the amount will come with it because you'll be like, I know how to put $750 back every time I get paid and not touch it. You'll get there eventually, but you have to start small. It's not realistic. And I think sometimes people get discouraged too because they're like, financially, I can afford to save 5000 or 10000 but they don't have the discipline. And then they start digging into it and they were like, man, I wasn't able to do it. And then they just kind of give up on it. And then they don't have a rainy day fund and something happens and they don't have anything to fall back on. So what I've learned, like I said, is that money management and saving money is not about how much you make, but more about the discipline to put it back, stay consistent and hit the goal. And I'm telling you, once you hit that goal, you're like, I want to I wanna make another goal and I want it to be bigger. Because when I was able to do that 52 weeks challenge consistently, and I actually bought my little Gucci purse in back. I was like, okay, I'm going to do this again. I'm going to buy me another Gucci purse. And I'm going to buy it, you know, and that type of thing. Um, it just, it motivates you. It's like once you hit one goal, now you're motivated to hit another goal. And that next goal can be bigger. And then you'll look around in three three years time or a couple years time, five years time, and you sitting on $50,000. It can be done. But it starts with discipline and it starts with small, obtainable goals. And so you got to start somewhere. So if you wanted to do that 52 week challenge, which I'll end the video with that, um, we're technically by the time this video, this particular video drops, we're in week 10 of 2023. So if you wanted to pick up on the 52 week challenge, you still can. You just need to save $55 and then start at week 11 saving. Um, so you would put $55 to the side and then next week save $11. Like it's literally that easy. It's so simple and easy just follow the 52 week plan i'll throw it up there at the end of the video um, because i think that's just like a really easy way and like i said even with that challenge you end up with like fourteen hundred dollars and that's somebody's rent so even if you don't do nothing else and you're like i don't know where to start do the 52 week challenge by the end of this year you'll have a whole month's worth of rent just sitting that you ain't touching and you walking into 2024 with a, a cushion because that's important we just i mean life is just life in and it's just up and down things are just crazy right now we just don't know what's happening so we all need a rainy day fund some people might look at this and be like girl i'm way past that i'm you know i'm in stocks and bonds i'm in certificates of deposit you know my savings account is making money for me that's great but for those that are beginners watching this like you have to start somewhere so you can develop that discipline and once you have it i'm telling you the opportunities are limitless. And unfortunately, nobody teaches us this stuff in school. They don't say, this is how you manage your money. This is how you keep, you know, fix your credit. This is how you blah, blah, blah. And notice at the beginning when I was talking about overall goals, I didn't say nothing about a credit card. That's a whole nother conversation for a whole nother day. But credit card come with interest payment. Credit card come with debt. Credit card is not the goal. The goal is petty cash, investments, if that's your thing, and then savings. Um, we want our money to make money for us in our sleep. Um, and so, and, and if nothing else, we want a cushion to fall back on at least one month's rent, at least rent plus car note. That way, if something were to happen, we not running around like a chicken with our head cut off stressed. So with that being said, 
you know, put in the comments what are some ways that you save money, some ways that you budget your money, you manage your money, because some people that are watching this can learn from you as well. Again, I'm not an expert. This is just what I've learned over time. And my own experience is, you know, trial and error. That's what it is. But I know it is a discipline thing and you have to start somewhere. So I'll put that 52 week challenge up. Start at week 11 if you want to start there or you might have bigger goals. But I'm just going to pull this out one more time to end the video because it's just so, it's just so cute. It is just so cute. So anyway, with that being said, thanks for watching and I will catch y'all on the next video.